You know, it's, it's, it's obviously a, a very disappointing season. Um, it's nowhere close to our standard. Uh, it's not acceptable. Uh, we know that. I know that. Uh, our players know that. And, uh, you know, I will say, as I did last Friday, Friday night, that there is growth happening inside this program. Um, we've, we spent the first year establishing the culture of this program, um, how we do things, what we stand for, um, and, and, and things that we're not going to deviate on. There's not one person in this building that thinks any part of this season is acceptable. Um, and everyone is working tirelessly uh, every day um, to get this program back. Um, I've told the story to our players. I've told the story to our, our staff. Uh, you've probably heard the story of the, of the, the Chinese bamboo uh, to where the growth, uh, you spend days and days and months uh, of watering. Um, you cultivate the soil, you plant, you water, and nothing happens. And you get frustrated because you don't see anything happening above the soil, but what you realize is, is the growth that's happening is underground. And once, it, once it, the, the sprouts start happening and the growth appears, then you see, uh, you see, you see growth uh, happening uh, from the outside. And um, growth happens in this program right now in two, two places. It happens in developing and it happens in recruiting. And our quarter one began on Monday at 7 a.m. with a team meeting. Um, and, and we've got to develop the players on our roster. And uh, we've got to give a mandatory off week. They'll be back in with Coach True on Monday. Um, and uh, excited to get back to, to, to our quarter one. Um, there is no learning curve. Um, we're not starting over. Uh, we're continuing with what we've established. Uh, we've got to do some things and, and continue to, to develop these, these, these uh, players. Um, from a year two standpoint, we spent year one trying to get their bodies like we wanted them, and now we've got to continue to, to build off of that and, and get stronger and get faster. Um, we know them. Uh, they know us. They know what, uh, what to expect in that weight room. And I expect to see huge gains as there's high expectations uh, this offseason. The second part of the growth is recruiting. And uh, we've got to recruit players to come in here and make a major impact the day they step on campus. And we're doing that. We're doing that at a very high level right now. We've got coaches that are out on the road as we speak. They're in schools right now. They'll be in high school games all over the country, Friday and Saturday. There is no days off uh, as our coaches are, are out on the road right now recruiting. I'm leaving immediately after our press conference uh, to get on the road. I was in home visits on Sunday night. Uh, I'll do eight home visits this week, and um, Sunday was our first day out, and, uh, but it's going extremely well, and we've got to get this class to the finish line. But uh, we expect up to 12 mid-years to join us in January and, and we'll come in and create an immediate impact um, and compete this spring and create some competition. And so uh, with that, I'll, I'll, I'll open up for questions. <coughs> Chad, I know uh, it's not a surprise John, John Chavis, I guess, activated, um, you know, the contract he's going to stay. Um, just how, how do you feel about that and what, what do you think, what, what, what all went into that? Well, I think, Bob, the, the, the main thing with that is, you know, as, as we look at, at um, obviously, Coach Chavis and, and what he's done and, and the improvements that, that we've, we've made, uh, we've got to continue to, we've got to have more. Um, but, uh, you know, continuity. Continuity is so much a part of, of success and creating that continuity of, of the players understand what's asked of them. Um, they understand defensively what we're, 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 we're doing and trying to do. Um, we didn't get to exactly everything that we wanted to this year defensively, and, uh, and that was understandable. We, th we thought we were going to be able to progress at, at a rate that, uh, that would get us there, but we weren't. And so, uh, you know, I think continuity is, is the biggest thing, getting Coach Chavis back in here. With uh, just the off the season, there's a lot of speculation. There'll be a big roster turnover and, and one. Well, is there anybody, you know, you know, of leaving? And two, how many can you do, can leave and not take a big hit with APR? Yeah, you know, we, we expect, you know, somewhere um, native signing upwards or getting, you know, upwards to 29 new faces in here. 
Um, but uh, you know, we have we've had some that have have um, have chosen to move on, and we, we want to wish them the best. And if we can help them in any way, we'll, we'll be more than more than happy to. Hey, coach, coach. I know you talk about recruiting the state of Arkansas. Is there anything you're going to try to do with any of the high school coaches to kind of get some of the type more players you want or try to implement some of the strategies or techniques that you want at a high school level, building up for coming to the University of Arkansas? Yeah, well, I was out on the road uh, Monday morning in, in, in our area and, and in and out of high schools uh, before I ever left the state. Um, I, I spent time here in, in our area. And, and I'll continue to do that over the, the month of December and into January. Uh, we'll be down at a clinic in February and, you know, constantly talking ball. There'll be, uh, we'll have our doors open this spring for high school coaches uh, in our state and, and all over to come in and want to sit down and talk ball and, um, and get to know us more. And so that's, it, it's all about relationships when it comes to that. But, um, you know, our footprint is the state of Arkansas. That, that's first and foremost. And I think we've done a, a good job of recruiting uh, this year in the state of Arkansas, and we'll continue to build on that. Chad, you mentioned continuity with John Chavis saying, do you anticipate making any other changes to your coaching staff? And then there are reports that Jeff Trailer is interviewing for the Stephen F. Austin job. Can you confirm that? Well, our staff right now is completely focused on recruiting. And, um, you know, I've been, you know, been a part of um, staffs to where, you know, coaches move on, become head coaches. and. And, and better themselves, and, and we would, we would uh, uh, you know, not stand in anybody's way that would want to go out and, and feel like that they're better in themselves. Um, and uh, we would support that and, and wish them the best. I guess with uh, Pulley and Curl, are they um, reinstated to the team, or kind of what's their status right now? Yeah, they, they were back in the team meeting uh, Monday morning at 7 a.m. Chad, you got some some good juniors like you know Dijon and Sosa and Pulley. Um, have those guys expressed to you they want to at least get NFL feedback, or has anybody indicated to you they might want to be early in draft entries, or how, what, what's going on with that? And with the transfers, is there anybody you can name that hasn't already been out there? Who's told you they're, they're leaving? Um, with with uh, Scuda and Sosa and Pulley, you know, our job um, is to, to – and they want to find out where they are uh, from a draft status standpoint. And then when we get that back, and we should get that back in early December, then it's our job to educate and provide them as much information as, as that they need uh, to, make a, to make a decision what's best for them. And we want to support them in that decision. I don't. I don't anticipate any other, <clears throat> any other junior. No. Kevin Callaway, what his status is with the team? Um, he's no different than where where it was um, this year. He's still a member of the team. Uh, he he he's, you know stepped back away from the team. So. Um, Coach Tempo wise, I, I know you weren't where you wanted no. wanted to be. What went into that, and then where do you expect to maybe get with another off season in spring? Well, you know, we we came out in the in the spring and trying to run at a very fast pace, and and uh, thought we did that and tried to establish the foundation for doing that. Uh, as you got into the season and you realized, um, you know, where your strengths were, where your deficiencies were, um, you had to at that point adjust and adapt. And, and you know we, we didn't we didn't go nearly as fast as we want to go uh, play it near the tempo that we want to play at um, but we'll continue we're not going to change who we are we're going to continue to work that we, we, we do that in practice but um, you know we will uh, we'll continue as we get into to spring ball to to uh, again knowing knowing our roster and knowing them they know us they know what to expect um, you know the learning curve there of just getting to know, what we have and what we have coming back and what's coming in uh, will help dictate a lot of moving forward how we're going to grow that. As a follow-up to Callaway, is this door still open for him to, to come back or has he moved on? We'll, we'll, we'll get together on all that and, and, um, and visit on that more later. <clears throat> Coach, it's, it's no secret that you guys are seeing Kelly Bryant tonight. If things don't work out with, with Bryant, do you anticipate continuing a search for another quarterback? Well, you know, I'm not at liberty to discuss, 
you know any names, um, but we, we know that we've got to we've got to have a consistency at at all positions, and we've got to have um, you know a competition at all positions, and so uh, every position right now is is wide open, and, and when when you go two and ten, there is nobody that has a, a permanent position. With uh, Connor Nolan, just kind of how much participation does he do with splitting base football and baseball this spring? Yeah, I'll get with Coach Van Horn over the next few days. Um, you know, he'll be he'll be a part, and um, I know he'll be contributing on the baseball field as well. And um, we'll we'll work together and and maximizing his workload in both areas. Yeah, you had a rough start, SMU, and then you built things up. Obviously, you have a rough start here to have to build things up. What's, I mean, how much does it help that you've been through this process already? I know the AAC is different than the SEC, but what, what can you take from SMU and apply to this situation? Well, a lot, a whole lot. And, and as we rebuild this, um, there's, um, you know, standing in, in the same situations that we're in right now, um, you know, I, I, the, the one thing that I do understand is that um, when you go through years like this, you go through um, while the, maybe the outside doesn't quite see the growth that's happening inside the program. And, and that's probably been the, 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 the main focal point as, and I've mentioned it last Friday, mentioned it earlier today, is the growth that's happening within the walls of this program. And, you know, you have to establish a, a foundation. You have to establish a, the fundamentals of, of what's, what, what we're about and what we're going to stand for and you know, what this program is, is going to be about. And the sense of pride of when you put that Razorback logo on the side of your helmet, uh, that you're playing for, for much more than just yourself. And, and you're, you're playing for Razorbacks of the past and the present and the future. And, uh, and so you spend a year, uh, as we did that, that year four years ago, of um, establishing our culture and, and laying the groundwork. And this is what we are and this is what we're going to be about moving forward. And um, it was the same thing that, at, at Clemson that we did. Um, this was our standard and we're not deviating. And then moving from that, you spend year two and moving forward on how to live the culture and how to live it on a daily basis, because every day counts on the last day. And, and those days in June and those days in July and early August, that, those days really did count when you look at the last day of the season. I was going to ask, uh, Billy Farrell is a guy we didn't see practice at all this year. Do you have an update on his health, and do you think he'll be back for spring ball or anything? Well, we don't know on that. Uh, don't know if he'll be back for spring or not. I know that he's still going um, and still working with our, our training staff and, and trying to get everything right. And with our doctors. You mentioned you were going to talk to Austin Cantrell about whether to graduate or come to come back. What what's his status right now? Well, right now he's you know he's graduating and uh, and and uh, not going to come back. I'm going to get back with him after this. You know we you know get back off the road from recruiting maybe uh, right before signing day and just just circle back and talk with him and uh, want to support him and what's best for him and his family. Do you anticipate all the eligible quarterbacks coming back, and what's Cole Kelly's status? I have not talked to Cole. I've been on the road recruiting. I anticipate talking to him um, quickly. Um, I, you know, I do anticipate that there, 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 there will be some, you know, probably be some changing. I know you can't comment about specific recruits, but you've got some in-home visit. How many coaches will be in that? Can you say how many coaches will be in your in-home today? Um, no, I, I can say that, you know, we've got a lot of coaches that are, that are on the road right now and excited to be uh, uh, in their, their destination for, for today and tomorrow and, and, and days moving forward. Coach, you mentioned, uh, I'm paraphrasing, just getting the team in shape. You may, may be having a leaner team. Um, now is it specifically in the offensive line about bulking up and being a different size, a different strength, maybe – would help in the run game going forward? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing saying right there is we, we've got to create some competition. Um, from a development standpoint, absolutely. We, we've, we, uh, we'll have guys that are getting their, their body fat composition taken, all our team will um, this next week. So we'll know where we are there. Um, and, and we've got to get stronger. Um, you know, and, and we've got to create, you know, we've got to move better. Uh, but, uh, uh, again, it, it's not starting over. 
You know, we were starting over a year ago. Um, so now this is building on what we've, what we've established um, and the foundation we've laid, and now we've got to get stronger. These guys now have got to get stronger. We have some guys that are coming back that played a lot of snaps. Um, they've got, as, as I mentioned earlier, there's huge expectations for each player moving forward in this program. They've met with their coordinators one-on-one -on -one, um, and, and the honest meetings that we have with them and, and things that we've got to take more serious. Um, and, um, and we've got to create some competition. And I think that's the thing when you bring in um, the 20, you know, I, I anticipate signing on, on in December probably anywhere from 22 to 25. Um, but overall, you know, getting in here probably somewhere around 29 new faces. Um, you know, we've got to create some competition. And, and competition brings out the best in every position. Coach, you were obviously limited by some personnel, um, you know, <coughs> you know, your personnel this season. Uh, how much of your playbook were you able to implement? And how long do you think it'll take for you guys to, I know it depends on who comes in, but how long <clears throat> do you think it'll take to get to where you want to be? You know, I, we, we, we probably got in about 30 to 35 percent of the playbook in offensively. Um, you know, when you get into a situation like this, like our, our first year at SMU and you find that you, um, you know, we've got to get good at something, and um, I don't, you know, I don't know what 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 we would really what did we hang our hat on? Yeah, we we did some good things at times, um, but what you did is is we we tried to to um, we tried to adjust and we tried to to adapt to to some of the things um, that we felt like that that our players w you know could could grasp and hold on to. Um, but uh, we've got to get better. We, we're, we're, a, we're a power counter team and, a, and an inside zone team is what we've been. And we've got to get good at it. And, um, and that comes with year one and moving into year two. So uh, and we've got to be able to grow our offense. I thought we did some, some things that, uh, uh, that, that took advantage of some of the speed that, uh, on the edge at times. But, um, but we've, got to, we've got to be able to establish an identity. During the season, it seemed after North Texas, you all did make improvements game by game until the last two. Did you just feel they mentally let go the last two games? You know, I, you know, you go back and you reflect on the entire season. And, um, you know, there are, again, that's part of the, the growth in the program. I think there are some, some things that we stepped back and we realized that we did, we did good, um, that we competed in some areas. Um, we didn't finish. We didn't finish. Um, I think that uh, I think the, the, the loss – uh, against Ole Miss, um, took the wind out of our sails as, as, as much as no one wants to. I don't want to admit that. I think it took some wind out, um, but um, our, our guys continued to fight. And so that was, that was a disappointing loss. Um, and so, uh, but, but again, you know, you come out here and you, you got the number seven ranked team on the ropes down by seven with five and a half minutes to go in a game. Um, you know, we've, we've got to, going back to, we've got to be more consistent. And, um, and that, that comes with, with, with growing and, and, and building. Any off-season surgeries, procedures, any of you guys are having to have? Yeah, we had uh, Hayden Henry had shoulder surgery yesterday. Uh, should be back full, full go. Rakeem Boyd had shoulder surgery yesterday as well. We'll be back. Um, Britt O'Tutt will have knee surgery. And, um, and so that's, that's, that's where we're at right now. Here in the back, um, you've talked about just some of the challenges today. Can you go into a little bit more specifically when you take over a program, just the culture change? What what is it that you've had to change, and and where have you seen that improvement that we're not, you know, seeing from the outside? Yeah, I, I think one when you take over a program, you know, you you, you come in and and you understand. There's two ways you take over a program that uh, um, when when you look at things and. If it's it's if if things have been going um, right, then then you know it's it's a little bit different when you open the doors and come in. Uh, when things when there's a change because things haven't been going good, then then you come in and and um, you know that there's areas that you have to address as well. So both of those you have to address. But I think the biggest thing, Bo, is is um, relationships, um, a trust. 
Um, you know, when, when, you, when you listen to your seniors talk to the team, and Yelda spoke to the team on Friday, and it was our Thursday night, and talk about all the change that's happened in his time since he's been here, the number of coaches and strength staffs and, and position coaches that have come in and out. And, um, and to listen to him talk to the young guys was very powerful. Uh, and so you know that, you know, you get in here and you, you try to immediately develop a relationship with your team plus recruit. Um, but at the end of the day, there's only so much time that you have to develop that relationship with the older guys. And then, then it turns into uh, learning and, and growing through adverse times. So once you get into the season, it's, uh, as, as I mentioned, we would find out a whole lot about ourselves after our first hit of adversity, whether that be that first loss. Um, and then you realize at that point we weren't, we weren't as close uh, we hadn't established the relationships as as maybe that we 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 wanted, and had had I thought we had, um, and so you built that. And I thought that during those times that this team grew closer uh, during those tough times, and uh, which is what you would expect. But uh, I think that that is one is, is establishing that relationship. You couldn't you couldn't create more time, uh, you couldn't fabricate. Uh, you know, building a relationship. Um, you know, with guys that, that, that have been here, that have gone through a lot of change, takes takes time. And it takes uh, – uh, you can't fake it. And, and, you know, we meet weekly with our seniors and, and continue to talk and let them have a voice. And the second thing is establishing what we stand for. This is how it's going to be ran. I've been here before. Um, I'm not going to deviate. I've got the blueprint. I've got the vision. Um, and And – it, it's worked. It's it's working at a very high level right now, and but we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna waver. Uh, I'm not gonna look the other way, um, because you know the the issues that that uh, as I mentioned every day counts on the last day. Um, when when those days and whatever it may be in August or July or June and I mean we've got to you know to look the other way on 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 things that happen. Maybe we're not going out and be as attentive to the details and drill work that we need to have. Um, it's not okay to look the other way. It needs to be addressed and it needs to be brought up front. And then you got to develop the, the leadership of the team to where it becomes a player-led team. And, um, and that's, that's things that, that, that are all part of year one. Projecting toward 2019, where all do you feel like you're going to be better? And on the O-line in particular, um, how, how will you get better? You're losing three starters there. Yeah, we've got to, uh, you know, we've got to target. Um, we've got guys already already targeted in this 19 class. We're continuing to target more guys. Um, would love to get uh, a couple of junior college um, older guys in. I think that to give give us an opportunity to to um, to have some, you know, some experience to be able to come in here to create some competition. Um, the guys that have played and have played at, at uh, um, some 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 high snap totals. Have got to, they've, they've got to have a great offseason. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited about Noah Gatlin. Um, you know, he, he played early. Um, and, and obviously we saved his fourth game for the last game, and he played a lot. I'm excited about him. I think he has a chance to have an unbelievable career. But he's got to get stronger. And, um, and so you got to develop. Again, it goes back to developing the guys that we have. And, um, and we've got to go, we've got to go um, continue to recruit and recruit at a very high level. You mentioned, uh, go ahead. you mentioned Boyd, uh, the shoulder surgery. Did he also have a leg issue in the last game? And, and how long did he play with the, the shoulder difficulty this yeah, year? This has been an injury that's uh, um, talking to our doctors have, have been for quite some time. Uh, so he's played with that uh, all year. And it was uh, just something moving forward for him that uh, he, could, he could still have played. Uh, his leg injury, he was – he would have been back. If we were playing this week, he would have been back. But this is something, an opportunity for us to get, uh, to get uh, his shoulder and, you know, all, all uh, ready to go and back, back to 100%. After Tennessee lost to Vandy in their season, Jeremy Pruitt said something to the effect of not enough guys bought in. What did you feel like was the buy-in quotient with your team this season? And what do you yeah, yeah, you know, and, and I, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I – you know that's a uh, that's a that's a question that um, you know as a head coach that's a that's a tough question. I, I do think that there was um, that these seniors when they walk out of here, 
that they, they took something out of this program uh, from their time here and uh, that'll, that'll, that'll help them in, in their next endeavor in life. Um, you know, whether it was that we, you, know, you, you establish a standard for your life and you don't deviate from the standard that, that, that's set. Hopefully they've learned that from, from being around me in a short period of time. Um, that we're not gonna, that, that you cannot cheat the process. Uh, no matter how hard you, you may want to, you can't cheat the process. Hopefully they learn that. But, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, when you talk to those guys, as, as I have and numerous times, I think that we've established a relationship and um, they know that I'm, I'm, I'm here to help them out. Chad, has the door closed on Brandon Martin rejoining the team in the spring? And then Austin Cantrell, has he made a final determination on whether he's going to come back next year? Well, on, on Austin, I'll, I'll get back with, with him after – you know, um, and um, and then the other was, yeah, no, no he, he's, he's not a part of our, our, of our program. You uh, mentioned the blueprint. I've been told that we didn't really come close to seeing the way that you want wide receivers integrated into your offense, and that's one of the things you want to change immediately. Can you address that? Absolutely. Um, yeah, we've got, uh, you know, when, when, we, when we look at what – to get this from a 30 to 35 percent of our playbook being opened up, and to be able to run our offense at the level that we want to run at, um, you know, we've got to have depth at wide receiver, and we've got to be able to have, uh, um, you know, the speed in, in some of the positions that we got to have. I've, I've talked about that overall. I did not think that we were near fast enough. We couldn't separate like I wanted to separate. Uh, when you go and you 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 change um, from from being a, a, a predominantly 12 or 13 personnel team, and, and you're going to predominantly 11 and, and, and some 12, but we're doing it in a different you know, tone and spreading it out. Uh, you create one-on-ones, a lot more one-on-ones than what we do offensively. And when you create one-on-ones, you put guys in space. And those, when we put guys in space, then that's where we've got to use and we've got to become faster. We've got to be able to, to separate ourselves <coughs> coming in and out of breaks. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and, and so, you know, we're, we're, we're recruiting and uh, we'll continue to develop the guys we got, um, the bigger body style receivers. And we, we've got to, that, that's an area that we've, we've addressed. Um, we've got to, we got to continue to, to uh, um, you know, recruit that style of, 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 a, of a wide receiver. And not just a wide receiver, all positions, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but, um, yeah, I mean, when you get, when you get create in space, then you've got to be able to win those one-on-ones and, and that's what we've got to do. Coach Center, um, you know, Yelda played there some. You, you went back and forth. Who are the candidates there, and how critical is that position to what y'all do offensively? It's it's vital. I mean, you've got to have a guy there that's uh, that can then you know can run the whole show. It's like having the quarterback, you know, and it's like in baseball when you're solid right down the middle, you're pretty good. And we've got, to, we've got to be solid right down the middle from, from running back to quarterback to center to linebackers to safeties. When you've got the center of your, 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 your team, um, you, know, you, you know, things are happening. And that center position is the quarterback of that group. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, moving forward, obviously Ty played a lot this year, uh, played a lot of snaps. We're expecting a, um, a, a huge gains from him this offseason and high expectations for him. Um, but to, to get the absolute best out of that position, we've got to have competition there. And, uh, you know, we redshirted Silas. Silas has gotten um, quite a few reps at center. We'll get more reps there. Um, and, um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll continue to, to build that. We've got to create depth. I mean, we don't have the depth in our offensive line. And I've said that this year with – I think we had one week this year that we had ten scholarship offensive linemen since my entire year I've been here. I think I've had one week of – 10 scholarship guys <clears throat> and then outside of that we've we've we haven't had that and when you don't have that you have to do a lot of cross training and uh i thought we 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 did that as about as well as we could uh the guys you mentioned uh henry boyd uh tut and then also briston gidry had surgery recently too do you anticipate them being back for spring ball or what's the timeline for those guys you know, I don't know. I don't know on that. Um, I think they'll be back. We'll start spring football. Our first practice will be February 26th. And so I don't know if they'll be back for the start. We hope to get them back maybe after spring break some. Um, maybe some in some non-contact roles. But we'll, we'll see. <clears throat> How many do you think 
I think up to 12. I expect up to 12 to come in here in um, um, for January. Last one. You, you mentioned guy, you know, not names, but transfers in or transfers out. Um, how many more do you think you're going to have, and, and is that finished without naming the names, or, or where are you at right now as you try to narrow down the roster for signing? Them? Yeah, you know, I, you know, you know, everybody will go back and they'll look and, and what's best for them, and you know, I don't anticipate a whole lot more. I mean, you know, I don't. You know, but we've met one on one with with all the players and kind of shared with them, you know, what they've got to work on moving forward, and uh, what the what the expectations are going to be from us in year two, and. And you know we've we've laid that out for them, and, and everybody was on board, and and um, I think our players are um, they're ready to get back in here next Monday and get quarter one started. Thanks, guys. All right, thank you.